we are at the 2010 Pat Cotisol International Conference, heading into the home stretch, and we are fortunate to be joined by a man wearing a sash. First, can you tell us your name? Uh, I'm Brian Heldenbrand. And what is your position, and why do you get to wear a sash? Uh, well, the sash is a good thing. Uh, Absolutely. Probably for the last six, seven years, um, we, my wife and I, uh, looked at the opportunity of something that was missing at the Cotiso conference and it seemed to be that there was a lot of information or lack of problem solving issues that would happen during the actual day of the conference or the two days of the conferences and so we would kind of see people in need and nobody there was nobody there to help them solve problems and so we would always kind of try to fill in the the blank before between the, the higher-ups and those who were at the, at the conference, we just wanted to find a way to help them. And so my wife created the, the idea of how about Cotisol Ambassadors. And we felt that Cotisol Ambassadors was a good way to help out if somebody needed assistance while they were either here as a presenter or whether they were um, just here because they wanted to be at the conference. And so any small issues, any small problems, we felt it was our role to take the extra step of offering our help to them. What a great idea. What kind of preparation goes into your uh, ambassador training? Um, not so much really, just we we know the layout of the facility, we, we know where things are, we have assistants that work with us and they're usually student volunteers either from other Cotiso members and we train them on the morning of and we guide them in the main responsibilities that we have are to make sure that people get parking validation discount tickets which is a money money element as well as certificates of attendance which shows that they've gone to the conference and so a lot of boards of educations and a lot of schools require them to show proof of their attendance and that kind of gives them you know that information and at the same time we help give directions for where you know where sessions are held or where plenary sessions are, are being conducted we just do a lot of things you know if people need copies we'll run errands and we'll do things for just about anybody if they ask us so tell me about the day in the conference life of an ambassador do you have any designated plans or you just kind of walk around and people come up to you? We're, we have a designated location near membership, but we our main job is the sash is kind of like, uh, here we are, we'll help, we're here to help you. And so we get questions in every location. And so we're not just stationary in one spot. We move around, we walk around, and in the process we usually get asked things like, my, my, my computer's not working, can you call somebody? And so we turn over our trusty phone number list and uh -huh. it allows us to call the people that need to be called. and. Uh, yesterday I was in front of a coffee shop in front of the school and somebody saw my sash and I was able to offer assistance in front of <laughs> Sung Myung Day. And so, you know, just it's, it's a great opportunity. We love the opportunity to help out with Cotisol and we get to be the eyes of what the conference is like because, if, you know, a lot of disgruntled people tend to show that there's a lot of problems in one particular area or in many areas. And, or if we get compliments, it's usually that they're satisfied with things that are going on. And so we are a good gauge as to how the conference goes. Indeed. And how many conferences have you been to? Uh, I've been a member of Cotisol for almost 15 years. 15 years. Okay. So you've seen the evolution of Cotisol. I've seen Cotisol move from many different locations. What's your sense for how it's evolved in recent years? How is this conference different from the first conference you went to? I think that when you get on a grander scale, it seems that you always have um, more of a responsibility and where it becomes uh, ownership and whereas at that time it was just a group of you know expats and a few Koreans that really had an interest in wanting to see English language develop and it was free it was comfortable and it was relaxed and it was planned in a week that kind of an idea to where there wasn't stress attached to it but now you know, it seems that there's timing and things that go into it, which it's turned into truly a, a year planning type of event. And, you know, it takes a lot of, lot of patience. It takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of working together. And that is never easy. What's your sense for how things are going this year? This year, I've seen better conferences. Um, I think that the gauge of talking to people and talking to those that have not had things go right. Uh, this year there's been a little bit more than usual. What kind of things uh, didn't go right? Doors not opened for them before their presentation. Um, uh, 
uh, no water in the facility. Uh, that was yesterday's situation, and Cotizo quickly corrected that mistake. And they work really hard. I mean, we, we get to see angry people venting their frustration, which is normal and natural. And we try to step in to try to make it seem, you know, we're really sorry, we apologize greatly, and we try what we can do to make it better. But this year's conference had a few more than we've had the last few years, and I don't know the reason for that. It's just maybe it was just something in the water, something in the air. Or maybe it could go back to maybe the planning and the organization for what had gone on this year maybe wasn't as good as it had been in the past. Um, How would you like to see the conference evolve? Do you have anything on your wish list? I think the, the bringing in of, pre of presenters, I, I think the involvement of uh, native speakers as well as non-native speakers uh, of English, I think the elements of opportunity. What I'm sorry, you're saying you want more. I think they are. I think that's fine. I think that what we can do, I think, to the limit of certain plenary plenary speakers, um, in terms of what we can offer. I think we do an excellent job of bringing in qualified, um, great names to Cotiso. Uh, I think the the facility is great. I think there are so many strengths to this organization, as well as to this conference. Um, I think communication and better uh, using of experienced people with new incoming people. There needs to be a good balance of being able to pass information along to the right people. Too many new people in positions of responsibility when they've never really experienced the conference before can really bring a lot of confusion because they've never really dealt with the whole system of operating and it's easy to get frustrated it's easy to get impatient and I think to have an experienced person in place when somebody new coming in working alongside of them training them to be prepared for the next role of being in charge that will definitely make it a lot better I think this year there seemingly there, there seemingly were too many new people that didn't have enough experience that could have helped Remember, that's one person's opinion. Yeah, but a and person who's had a lot of experience <laughs> and who's in a position to kind of see uh, where any gaps might I mean, exist. I greatly enjoy Cotiso. Yeah. I, my beginning for, for language development truly came because of Cotiso. I believe in Cotiso. I believe the purpose of why Cotiso is here is always done what it's intended to do, if not more. And they are many satisfied people. And I think that Cotisil has a wonderful future in Korea. Um, and I think that as they continue to utilize the strengths of each teacher and each educator that comes through Korea, whether they're here for a year or for two years or 15 years, I think that there's a need to keep the tradition going. And it offers a great, great chance for language development as well as promoting something positive in Korea because there are a lot of negatives no matter where you live and I think English teachers sometimes get a bad rap for what they do and for how they act and many times it's just a small percentage uh, but I truly think that uh, Cotisil has made great strides and I think they're going to continue to do a great job in the future. Well on that note Mr. Ambassador thank you so much for joining <laughs> it's us. It's my pleasure. And for serving and uh, all the help um, you've provided people. Well thank you I enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you.